Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Um, this is not a planned video in the slightest. Um, this is your vlog for December of 2014. Um, I just I just wanted to make this video to update you on a couple of absolutely humongous things. And to plug the gap really because it's been a good few months since I uploaded and um, I, I don't want to become disconnected with you guys. So um, stay tuned. So the first thing you may notice is uh, what is now not behind me. Um, the Mac Pro is missing from my desk setup. Um, I've sold it. I, I was trying to think of a more, more di a different way to say that, but no. I've sold it. It's gone. Um, why? Why have you sold it, Niall? A couple of reasons, really. One, depreciation and future value. Um, these Mac Pros are dirt cheap now. If you don't care about um, being what you would call future-proofed, then they are incredible machines for incredible prices. Now you can pick one of one of the, like a spec I got quad two point six six gigahertz, six ten even like sixteen gigs of RAM, um, a nice GPU. And you can get it all for like 200 quid now, it's just ridiculous. I remember when, when like, Power Mac G4, Power Mac G5s were going for that sort of money. It's just crazy how much power you get for, for, for so much little money now. And, um, yeah, so I, I just went, I looked, looked at it, I was like, holy shit, I'm, I'm really, I'm on a sinking ship here. I'm, there's not, not, no better way to say it, I'm on a sinking ship. And if I continue to use this machine, which I was perfectly happy with, really, to be honest with you, I would be stuck in a similar situation as I was with the G5, with this massive, gorgeous piece of engineering that no one wants. So I jumped ship, I sold it while it was still worth something. Um, obviously I had Yosemite on it as well, which increased it, its sort of popularity and made it sell a little easier, as it's running up to date software and stuff. Um, but yeah, they're so cheap now, and I just... I didn't want to be stuck in in a situation of having a 25 kilogram paperweight, so that was the first reason. The second reason is kind of future proofing. Um, I I really I don't know how long how much longer. Like I've done videos on how to install Yosemite on these Mac Pros and they, they run it fine, but I don't know for how much longer these Mac Pros are going to be capable of of doing being able to get the latest software by doing this sort of a, a method and um, there was a couple of things which started going wrong in, in terms of the bootloader and chameleon and it's just not necessarily going wrong I mean you could fix them but I was just sort of in a situation where I was like I, I just want to compete with the works I can't be asked to, to, to be doing with this stuff and the third reason is uh, I wanted to build something myself and I'm going to go on to that now in a minute, but um, I got the itch. Um, I built a PC on this channel when it was in its very sort of fetal. That's a really weird way of putting it, but um, real at a really young, uh, really young sort of time for the channel. Um, and it was a terrible, terrible series of videos. It was a cheap ass Sempron Mini ITX, uh, Micro ATX. Um, piece of shit really. It had integrated graphics for the first year, um, single core Sampron processor. The the Gigabyte motherboard was quite nice and I still have the motherboard now because it's, it's handy to have around but it was a really cheap machine. I think it cost me about £150 in total but um, yeah I just got that itch again and I wanted to build something. I wanted to have a machine because I was looking into CPU upgrades for the Mac Pro and I was looking at them and I was thinking single core performance on pretty much all of these CPUs is pretty shocking by today's standards. Multi core performance, which is why it's still a beast for like Final Cut and After Effects and Premiere and stuff like that. It's still a beast for multi core stuff, but single core performance on those Mac Pros by today's standards are slow. Um so I wanted something which would give me better single core performance because not all applications take advantage of, of two processors and four cores. Most of them 
are happy to run at a nice speed on a, a speedy one, one single core processor. So I I wanted something that would be a, lo a lot better in to in terms of um, single performance. But I didn't really want to lose. Um, I'm I'm rambling now. I didn't want to lose multi core performance too much. Um, so that is why I've decided to build myself a Hackintosh. I've I was looking at doing it back when I got my Mac Pro, and I'm really glad I didn't do it at the time. Um, but now is the right time, in my opinion. I, I I'm just itching to get going, and I have nearly all of the parts here. I have one part now to come through, and then I'm good to go. Um, I'm going to put the specs on screen now. Asus H81i Plus uh, Mini ITX motherboards, USB 3.0. Really nice little motherboards. Um, Intel Core i3 4150. That's a dual core, hyper threaded uh, Core i3 processor, obviously running at 3.5 gigahertz, I believe. I'm just memorizing the numbers off my head. Um, 8 gigs of RAM, a GTX 660. Um, a pretty, well, a, an improved cooler for the CPU over, over what Intel provide you. Um, a couple of Seagate Pipeline HD2s. I love those drives so much. They run. They're not. They're not quick drives. I mean, they're not. They run at 5900 RPM, I believe, and really they're designed to to run in like PVR sort of like skyboxes and stuff. But they are so reliable. They are so quiet, and they are relatively speedy. So I, I'm I'm just I'm uh, I adore, and I know I know a couple of people that are with me on that Seagate Pipeline HD2s. They're just awesome drives. So I got a couple of those um, to pop in there, um, and I think that's all of the specs. Yeah, apart from the case, which is going to be um, obviously the Mini ITX BitPhoenix Phenom. Now, many of you are probably aware of the BitPhoenix Prodigy. That's a sort of Mac Pro esque uh, Mini ITX case, and that's a really nice case. But I went with the Phenom for a couple of reasons, really. One. I don't like the handles. I mean, I love the handles on the Mac Pro and the G5, but they have like really f like flimsy, plastic, flexible hands. I'm gonna go into more detail when I do the full Hackintosh build, but I don't like the the handles on the Phenom. They feel really crap, and um, I just really like the minimalist sort of design of, of of the Phenom case. And the internals are just genius. The horizontally mounted motherboards. Um, you can fit a, a proper ATX power supply in there. The awesome amount of space in there for, for like tower coolers and I mean like 12 inch 13 inch long I believe it, they can take graphics cards and um, you can fit hard drives literally everywhere so it's a really really flexible case and for, for what I was looking for it's just perfect I wanted to build mini, mini ITX because I just I, I like the idea of having now a, a, a nice compact but expandable and upgradable small form factor computer. Yeah, it's it should be awesome. And as well, on, on another side though, you should see a ridiculous amount of light. It's actually almost dark outside, and um, we're still getting a metric shit ton of light. I bought myself um, a couple of soft boxes, and the difference they make it is it, just it's it's unbelievable. So yeah, that was more to go with the Hackintosh build. I want to make this series of vid videos by far the best I've ever done. Um, really nice 24 frames per second cinematic sort of shots of all the parts and stuff. And I really want it to to be a proper high quality sort of series of videos. So I'm just rearing to go. I'm just waiting for that one part. Oh, the power supply, I forgot to put. That's the one I'm waiting on, the power supply. Um, it's a Corsair CX 500M, uh, 500 watt semi-modular power supply. Um, there are a couple of bad reviews out there, but the general consensus is, is they're all right. And 500 watts for for this system is gonna be is 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 breathing space really. I mean, people say, oh, are you sure 500 is gonna be enough for the 660? But it, it it'll it'll be fine. The, the 660 uses 150 watts of the max, and the rest of the system I don't see using more than 150, maybe 200 tops. So it should also be a relatively energy efficient computer. The Mac Pro is a beast, but it had a 1,000 watt power supply, and the electricity pills they just, they were just ridiculous. So it it should keep it, it should also run a little bit cooler. Um, although my Mac Pro did say really cool, the power supply did kick out a lot of heat. Nice 
compact, little, relatively little 500 watt power supply. It should, it should keep the room a little bit cooler. And yeah, it should just be a really nice system overall. And it should make for some awesome, awesome videos. So um, yeah, I just wanted to keep you up to date. Hackintosh, well the Mac Pro's gone. Hackintosh is coming very, very soon, within the next week possibly. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this really sort of disjointed, long-winded video guys, but um, I hope you're excited for the stuff that is coming on the channel in the next few weeks. It's going to be just so awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.